G'day fellas. So in this video I'm going to do a few experiments with sodium metal. So sodium being one of the alkali metals is very reactive. So first up what I'm going to do is just set up a chunk of sodium and shoot it with the 2506. And what you could see is the yellow flame emitted by burning sodium. So when that bullet passes through, it pulverizes it into very small particles, high surface area which ignite in the air, which excites the electrons in the sodium atom into a higher energy state. And as it drops back down, it emits that energy as a photon of light in the yellow spectrum. Anyway, let's try something else. So I'm filling a glass test tube with sodium pieces which I'm going to purge with argon gas and suspend inside a bottle full of water. The aim here is to demonstrate the reaction of sodium with water with the exclusion of air. So what I'm going to do is put a bullet from the 22 through the bottle to smash the test tube and release the sodium. Anyway, it turned out the rifle was shooting way to the left. So it took me four shots to walk the bullet onto target. Which kind of invalidated the exclusion of air experiment. I'll have one more go at it after resodding the rifle in. So the bullet releases the sodium which reacts with the water creating hydrogen gas which ejects the water out the bullet holes. But then the reaction seemed to stop so I shot it again which initiated the explosion. So I'll look at possible reasons for that at the end of the video. So here's another idea inspired by them potato guns which shoot a core of potato when you squeeze the trigger. Now unfortunately this was a bit of a failure. But what I did was use a 2506 case to create a core of sodium. And then use the shotgun primer as the propellant to propel it out the barrel. So while it did hold together in one piece and had enough velocity to penetrate the water balloon, that 25 caliber pellet didn't have that critical mass to explode, rather just fizzled away creating hydrogen gas. And when fired point blank into a fish tank, which I thought would blow the sodium apart, but it only did the same thing. The pellet stayed together and fizzled away on the surface. Now the other alkali metals like potassium, rubidium and cesium would likely explode in that quantity. But as you get more reactive, they also become softer and are unlikely to hold together as a projectile. And finally, what I'm going to do is chuck a 25 gram block into a puddle and have a look at why sodium actually explodes. Because it's not obvious why a solid would explode in contact with a liquid. So on contact with water, two moles of sodium react to form two moles of sodium hydroxide and a mole of hydrogen gas. A reaction which generates about 1000 degrees Celsius, which quickly melts the sodium at 98 degrees. Now because the hydrogen gas is creating an insulating gas layer, the more thermally conductive sodium continues to heat up. And once it reaches 500 degrees, the hydrogen ignites. But that doesn't cause the explosion. The sodium continues to heat up 
until it reaches 883 degrees Celsius, where it starts to boil. The gas layer begins to expand with the boiling sodium, which starts reacting with the surrounding water, heating it up, which results in a catastrophic collapse of that insulating gas layer and subsequent explosion as the two gases mix. Now the explosion of sodium and water has an explosive yield measured at about 15% of TNT. Theoretically it would be higher, but if we rewind it, you can see that a good portion of the molten sodium is ejected into the air, unreacted. And the theory of the collapsing gas layer was somewhat supported by the bottle experiment earlier, where it was the bullet that caused the collapse of the gas layer. Unless that fucking big fucking filming expedition done, what, what, what now? <laughs>